No matter how fast the Flash is, he just can't seem to be in two places at once. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Barry Allen is the fastest man alive, but even being super fast doesn't help you when you don't know where to go. Because of that, he is currently waiting for word from Batman or Wally about the unknown person that currently took 10 years away from the superheroes' lives. Wally has gone off to see the Titans and figure it out from that side, while Batman is doing his own investigation. Barry would love to get on the case himself, but there is plenty to keep him busy in Central City. And this is the problem that Barry is having. With so many crimes going on, he just isn't fast enough. He knows that, so he can't stay in one place long enough to even get a thank you. He runs off to the crime scene where his friend August is waiting for him with the captain of the police force, Singh. He grabs the evidence and then he remembers that he was supposed to meet up with Iris and the other Wally West. If you're confused, there are in fact two Wally Wests at this point, both raised by Iris. Classic Wally West is currently off with the Titans, while the newer Wally West that was introduced in the New 52 is still here in the main book. Barry runs over to Jitter's Cafe only to find that he's late as always. He talks to them for a second and then fire trucks go racing by. Wally looks up from his tablet to let Barry know that there's a fire on 4th and a Star Labs transport under attack on 22nd. Before Wally can even continue what he's saying, Barry takes off to the fire, putting on his suit. He tells himself he can do both. The fire is on the way and he's fast enough, so he runs into the building where he grounds a woman and carries her out and she screams, MY CHILDREN! He runs back in, dodging the flames in the crumbling building. And while this is going on, August managed to get into the path of the transport and the men who stole it. Members of the Black Hole pull their guns out on August. Flash runs out of the building with a kid in each arm. August, meanwhile, sees the Black Hole symbol and knows it. It was the symbol that was painted near where his brother was killed, and he wants to know who these guys are. They explained that they are Black Hole, and they pull the trigger. Flash knows that it's too late. He knows that he's a second off. He knows that he isn't fast enough, but he tries anyway. He hits top speeds, racing down the city with the rain pouring all around him. But he's already too late! And in a millisecond behind the bullet, he hears a crack! A bolt of lightning hits August, and then Flash sees August move at super speeds, knocking out the guy that tried to shoot him. And he looks at August to see he's now a speedster. And thus, the Flash adds someone else. Someone else with powers. Someone else who is morally driven to do the right thing. The first thing that they did was test out the limits of August's new Speed Force powers because he refused to go to Star Labs and get tested there. Once they discovered that he could do everything that the Flash could do, August turned to him. Thank you for helping me, Barry. <laughs> I, I'm not Barry Allen, I'm the Flash. But August explained that Barry's secret was safe with him. He knows the Flash helps people, and he knows Barry was there for him when his brother was murdered. It's okay, he isn't gonna tell anyone. Meanwhile, while Barry is teaching his new friend, someone else is testing out their Speed Force powers in secret. Wally West gained them during the last storyline and he's now testing out his top speeds, but he has a concern. His uncle was Daniel West, the Reverse Flash. What if he turns evil like his uncle? Barry and August head over to the office where August begins to talk to Barry and ask him, with these powers, there's so much that we could do. Why don't we do it, Barry? We could be above the law, handling things ourselves. We could save people that deserve it. And Barry tells August, that sounds like revenge. While doing that sounds like it could be easy, it wouldn't be right. We need to do things by the book, August. And August asks him, wouldn't you use these powers to save your mother? Which throws Barry off guard, because he tried that, breaking the timeline in the first place. Iris then calls up August to discuss the case. But while on the phone, the black hole group actually just kidnaps her right there because she's trying to report on them. August tells Barry where she is, and in a flash, he's gone. Just as Iris leaps out of the moving vehicle, Flash runs in catching her, and then he rockets off chasing the van, only to be hit by a weird speed force based beam in his chest. The crooks all leap out of the van asking Flash, did you really think you could stop us alone? And that's when August runs in. Not anymore, he doesn't. The Flash tries to tell him to stop, but August, using the tricks that he was taught, throws the Black Hole gang off their balance. Then, with their combined powers, they take out the gang, and they get them arrested. Irish runs over to the new speedster to ask who he is, and after considering it and rubbing his chin, August informs her that he is the Flash's new partner. Flash thinks about it, and he decides that he likes the sound of that. A partner? Things could be worse. Maybe this was the Speed Force answering the Flash's wish to be able to live a life and save people, to be in two places at once. But that's when things get a tad bit more interesting, as the Speed Force storm that was around earlier giving August his powers begins to strike people all over Central City, creating dozens of speedsters everywhere. 
August and Flash begin to run around the city, rounding up as many of these new would-be speedsters who are trying to commit crimes up as they can. They bring them to Iron Heights, and once there, Flash explains to August his weird relationship with Eobard Thawne, the reverse Flash. He explains how Eobard killed his mother and has been messing with his life through timeline manipulation. And August is in shock. He had no idea what Eobard had put Barry through. But as they go to leave Iron Heights, they get told about another location that new speedsters are ending up at, and that's Star Labs. The people who got their powers and didn't choose to immediately commit crimes went to Star Labs to try and learn how to control their powers. And that's where Flash meets Mina, a woman who had a boring job at Star Labs, but was always interested in the Speed Force and its applications. So, she created the Speed Force Testing Center for all of these new speedsters. Flash gets a little nervous, telling her that she better not be planning to use these new speedsters as lab rats, but after she runs to Keystone City and back, he sees why she wouldn't be interested in turning speedsters into lab rats. August runs back to hold down their jobs at the police station, while Mina brings Flash to where he's needed. You see, some people got their powers and they went for help at Star Labs, but some people got their powers and headed out to be a criminal, and still some people couldn't control the power that they gained, and they're very scared. Mina brings Flash to see a woman named Avery who's vibrating so quickly that she can't seem to hold still, so he teaches her how to think slowly to stop it from happening, and he sees the good that he could do by teaching people. Realizing that he needs to help all of these new speedsters, Flash decides that he'll even help the criminals as he returns to Iron Heights with Mina to get them out of lockup, only to hear the alarm blaring. He runs over to the room and the guards tell him that his partner is already inside, and when he gets into the room with the criminal speedsters, he finds them all dead, sapped of their life force in August on the ground. August explains that he came to check on them, but when he got here, he saw someone vibrating through the walls, and then that person sapped these kids of their speed force before throwing him to the floor. And he said his name was Godspeed. They honestly don't have much to go on, so Flash goes back to the training facility to do just that, train new speedsters. Even Avery, the woman that he helped, is beginning to learn how to control her powers, so Mina brings him into another room to explain something. She has done her research, and the people with the Speed Force, they're all connected through the Speed Force, and the Speed Force itself wants to be brought back together. It's been divided due to the Speed Force storm. So whenever two speedsters use their powers next to each other, their Speed Force will lock together, and it will recombine into one of the speedsters, the fastest one. Basically, the speedsters can race against each other, and one speedster will steal the speed out of the others. And that's how Godspeed stole the speed out of the kids. August then drops in out of uniform so that they can keep their secret identity safe, and he drops off the clues from the Godspeed crime scene. As Barry begins to flip through those reports, Iris arrives with some incredible news that she wanted to get Barry before she releases it to the public 24 hours later. Dr. Joseph Carver was a Star Labs scientist that was fired for experimenting with the Speed Force. He stole the Speed Force sample that Star Labs had, and he found a way to weaponize it. That's what the Flash was shot with, which means the Black Hole group is using the Speed Force against him. Flash runs off with Mina alongside him, leaving August back to heal in case Godspeed arrives, and they arrive at Dr. Carver's lab, which is also Black Hole's base. Flash and Mina run around disabling Dr. Carver's thugs, and the Flash grabs the Doctor, asking him if he did this. Did he create the Speed Force storm? And he admits to it, telling the Flash that the storm is only the beginning. And then he activates his new device, the Speed Machine. The Speed Force begins to jump to his machine and place it into his body. But it's too much, and he begins to change into a Speed Force tornado, into something completely different, and he screams out in pain. And then using his newfound powers, he throws the Flash to the ground, and Mina runs over, helping him up, and informing him that he can't do this alone. He can't stop Dr. Carver by himself. And that's the moment that August runs in with some of the new Speed Force trainees, telling him that he doesn't need to work alone. August actually came here in his Speedster uniform to interrogate Dr. Carver about the death of his brother, because Dr. Carver is linked to Black Hole, and Black Hole is linked to his brother. But it's also a good thing that he brought some of these Speed Force trainees, because it looks like the Flash could use a hand. The Flash asks him if this is Godspeed, and August tells him that he isn't sure. It was all a blur when he was knocked down. So the Flash comes up with a fast plan that requires requires the help of everyone as they distract him, and then they all begin to race around Dr. Carver. Using the new information that Mina has given him, Flash decides that the group can outrace Dr. Carver and draw the Speed Force out of him, and in a giant crack, that's exactly what happens. Then as Dr. Carver is on the ground in pain, the Flash smiles, realizing that he now has multiple people to help him. Having partners is something that he has missed ever since the original Wally West vanished. Meanwhile, our new Wally West is still trying to get a handle on his new Speed Force powers, and he sees an ad asking if anyone needs help learning their speed force, they can visit Star Labs. Flash and the crew head back to Star Labs, where the Flash realizes that he can actually do this. He can actually teach these newcomers how to control their powers, and then he can possibly get a normalish life back. And that's when Mina kisses him. So he decides to take a major leap. He doesn't want his two lives to be separate anymore. And he tells her, my real name's Barry Allen. 
The next day, The Flash decides that it's time to finally relax a little, to enjoy his life with Mina. And he even takes some time to actually visit with Iris and have a cup of coffee with her. Wally West, on the other hand, though, has arrived at Star Labs and he really isn't sure he should be doing this. He really kind of wants to keep his Speed Force powers secret. But Mina sees him trying to walk away and after talking to him, decides to help him train away from the lab. She shows him what he can do and she even gets a chance to show him how to be a hero like The Flash. And Wally loves it. So Mina and him agree to meet back every day to continue his training. Mina then heads back to Star Labs to find the doors blown off. And inside is one man sapping the speed force out of everyone around him. Godspeed! She runs over trying to stop him by punching him, but he's way beyond her league. So she knocks Avery away from him and tells her to find the Flash. She turns to the other speedster trainees and tells them that he's trying to sap their speed, so they need to run against him. They need to outrace Godspeed. But instantly, it doesn't work as he is so much faster than any of them. And Avery runs off to try and find the Flash. Flash. They need help. The Flash is running through Central City with August by his side as they discuss what Mina could mean to him when Avery shows up telling them what's going on. Godspeed is at Star Labs. The Flash is confused. They stopped the black hole. They stopped Dr. Carver. Wasn't he Godspeed? So he takes off for Star Labs where he finds a bunch of the trainees drained of their life force and Mina's suit on the ground and no Mina. Flash and August get to work trying to solve this because the Flash isn't convinced that Mina is dead. There was no body and her suit had traces of something that happened to him a long time ago. Something like a crisis. August tells him that they should not reach for straws and that they should be out there looking for Godspeed. But Barry tells him that he's looking all over the city. Godspeed isn't there. The news then reports that Godspeed just ran a man across the highway, scraping him at lightning speeds to death. He turns to everyone and asks how the news knew to call him Godspeed, and the trainees explain that they told the press people needed to know the situation. And the Flash tells him, you're right, I'm sorry I didn't tell them sooner. So he runs over to talk to Iris about the information that she has on the black hole and get her thoughts on the death of Mina, just as Wally comes home and overhears the discussion of the death of Mina. Barry turns and is confused as to why Wally is so upset as tears begin to stream down his eyes. He then runs out of the room and as Barry tries to stop him to understand what's going on, he then quickly discovers that Wally is gone and he begins to wonder, does Wally have powers? As he walks back into Iris's room, he decides to ask her what the latest victim's name was and Iris informs him of the individual's name. That's when it all clicks. Barry knows who Godspeed is. He takes off as the Flash and he finds August, demanding that he stop so that they could talk. And Flash explains that he was checking into Godspeed's victims. And there's one victim that didn't fit the MO. The victim was dragged to death and he didn't have any Speed Force based powers. And August smirks. Sounds like it was personal. It was Billy Parks, August. The man you suspected of murdering your brother. Tell me you didn't do this, August. <sighs> he deserved to die. Billy could have been an innocent. My gut was right, Barry. He did it. We don't know that. Yes, we did. Killing isn't justice. I took a criminal off the streets. What? Did you kill the other speedsters as well? What about Mina? You barely knew her, Barry. Excuse me? You and Mina weren't some great love affair for the ages. Don't turn Mina into another tragedy for you to make into your life story. And the Flash strikes August across the face. So he wipes the blood aside and he lets the lightning flow. You know, I was thinking of calling myself the new and approved Flash because you clearly aren't cutting it anymore. But I realized that with these powers. I am judge, jury, and executioner, so I call myself Godspeed. Then he runs off. Try to catch me, Flash! He begins to run off with the Flash in pursuit. How did you do it, August? Well, Barry, you see, I'm faster than you. So much faster that I can do what you have ever so desperately wanted. I can be in two places at the same time. And that's when a second Godspeed arrives, and with the two of them, they knock the Flash down. One of the Godspeeds grabs Barry, while the other one repeatedly pummels him until he's bloody. You have to believe me. I never wanted to kill Mina or the others. I just wanted to be fast. So I could stop anyone from ever having to experience the pain that I felt from losing someone. Think about your mother's killer sitting in Iron Heights. If someone like me was around back then, they could have saved her from Thawne. And then he screams out in pain. The Flash asks him, Are you okay? I can't believe you're still concerned about me. Keeping myself in two places for too long begins to hurt. So the Flash gets up. Good! And he sucker punches August so that he can run for it. He makes it back to Star Labs where he collapses on the floor. But Godspeed isn't done while the Flash is thinking of a plan. The Black Hole group has now taken some hostages over at the local courthouse where they demand the police listen to them. And realizing that he can do good and find out more about Black Hole and his brother's killers, Godspeed runs to the scene to vibrate two guys into the walls and take out the third before running the leader of this group to a rooftop. He begins to shake him violently at super speeds, demanding to know how some street thug named Billy Lee Parks is connected to Black Hole, and the leader tells him, I have no idea what you're talking about. Meanwhile, Wally runs over to Star Labs looking for the Flash, and he finds him doing nothing. Not aware that he's trying to recover from his last meeting with Godspeed, Wally flips out on him, telling him that he can't believe that he's standing
standing around doing nothing while Mina's killer is running free. He'll just go find Godspeed himself and he runs out of the building. Barry catches up to him and he finds out that since the Flash is friends with his aunt Iris, that's why Wally didn't want to seek out the Flash for help. But Mina, she was helping him. And now she's gone. But he learned from the Flash that he can also help people. He needs to help people. It's his choice what he does with these powers. And the Flash is shocked. You learned that from me? But it gives him an idea. If he can go faster, he can stop Godspeed. And Mina said that the Speed Force was trying to reconnect. His theory is that the reason that the Speedsters died is because they raced against Godspeed, fighting to keep their powers. So what if they were giving them up willingly? He takes Wally with him back to Star Labs and he explains to everyone that he wants to take their speed so that he can stop Godspeed. They'll get to go back and have normal lives, but they have to willingly give it up. And it works, granting both Barry and Wally more speed than they've ever had before. And that's when Godspeed arrives, kicking everyone. If you're willing to give up your powers, you don't deserve them. The Flash chases after Godspeed, and as they exit the lab, he informs Flash, I'm gonna do you a favor, Barry. I'm going to Iron Heights to kill the man that killed your mother, Eobard Thawne, along with every other crook in Iron Heights. I'll be back in a minute, buddy. The Flash runs after him as fast as he can, and then he reaches out to August, knowing that he can use the Speed Force feedback to stop him from running. They both hit the ground in pain, and August tells him, I'm shocked that you would use the Speed Force against a friend. He stands up, and he begins to separate himself into two. And then one begins to run to Iron Heights, while the other stays to prevent Barry from stopping him. Because Barry's all alone. He can't stop Godspeed until Wally jumps in. No, he's not! Barry gets back up asking Wally what he's doing and he tells him that he was thinking about his Aunt Iris and how she would never stand by while other people were in trouble. August looks at the two of them and he tells him, too bad I'm still faster. But Flash knows that he actually isn't faster. When August separates, he breaks his Speed Force connection down, making him slower, meaning the Flash and Wally can outrace him. They begin to run circles around the two Godspeeds and they begin to sap out his Speed Force energy until crack! Wally then stands over the defeated Godspeed in a new Kid Flash outfit granted to him by the Speed Force. August swings at him, throwing him aside, thinking that he still has enough speed to try and finish his mission. So he gets up and he begins to sprint towards Iron Heights until the Flash grabs him and in a swift motion, knocks him out. A few days pass and August is restrained in Iron Heights where Barry comes to visit him to inform him. Billy Parks wasn't the killer of his brother. He ran the evidence, and August was wrong the whole time. August doesn't want to believe it, but Barry assures him that he'll track down the real killer, and August scoffs at that. You don't have time, Barry. You're alone again. Plus, you're going to be busy trying to figure out who's behind the black hole and that speed force storm that started all of this. Barry looks at him. It was Dr. Carver. We stopped him. No, Barry. There was someone else. Someone over him that supplied him, and I know who it is, but I'm not going to tell you. I think it'll be a nice bargaining chip that I can save for the future. Meanwhile, Wally shows his Aunt Iris his new speedster suit and begins a very long explanation. And then he tells Iris not to worry. He won't become Daniel. He has a great teacher named The Flash. While The Flash is watching over Wally's training, someone appears behind him to thank him in his ear. Someone that he really shouldn't be hearing. He turns around to see a speedster trail on the ground asking, Mina? And that concludes the Flash Godspeed storyline. It's actually called When Lightning Strikes Twice. I love this storyline. I think it's a great new direction to bring the Flash in, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Comic Story and Instagram at Comic Story, where we can chat all day and all night. And I'll see you guys next time right here.